Hi, uh, my name is Kathleen Keneally, and I'm a software engineer in Google DeepMind and one of the technical leads of the Gemma team. Before I get started, I just want to say how incredible it is to see so many of you here today. When we were building Gemma, our, our North Star, really the thing we were most excited about was building something that would help accelerate research in the open source community. And in the very short amount of time since we have launched, I, I can't believe how many incredible projects, research, innovations the open source community has already built on top of Gemma. So I'm particularly excited to be here with you all today and especially delighted to tell you all about one of my favorite tools for model development. JAX. JAX is the core fundamental framework that underlies all of Gemma's development, training, and testing. I have a feeling that there are probably many of you here today who have used JAX or are currently actively using JAX in your work. I see a couple of nods and smiles. If you haven't used JAX before, I'd like to spend the next couple of minutes giving you a high-level overview of what this framework is and telling you more about why JAX is the framework that the Gemma team chose to do all of our model development. Again, if you've never used JAX before, this is probably the point in the talk where you're wondering what I'm talking about. At a high level, JAX is a framework for writing function transformations. Importantly, it's a framework for writing function transformations that are composable, which enables us to do very complex operations like differentiation and vectorization. More specifically, JAX is a combination of Autograd, an automatic differentiation library, and XLA. XLA is a compilation engine that targets high performance code on CPUs, GPUs, and TPUs. So in a nutshell, JAX is enabling ML research on as efficient code as we can possibly get. There are three advantages of JAX that I really want to highlight today that were critical advantages when we were developing Gemma. In particular, I want to highlight the performance of JAX, the portability across different types of hardware, and frankly, it's, it's ease of use. Oh, also importantly, <laughs> apologies. Um, one of the things that has been incredibly beneficial about using JAX is it has a modular layer design. This means that you can combine lots of different frameworks and still maintain all of these benefits of JAX. So for Gemma in particular, we used a combination of Flax, a neural network library, Orbax, a common JAX utilities library, and Optax for gradient processing and optimization. If instead of doing LLM development, you were more interested in scientific computing, for example, you could switch out Flax for something like Equinox, or you could replace that entire top stack with Keras, as Martin just demonstrated for us. And again, as I said, there are many benefits to using JAX, but these are the three that I'd like to highlight for you today. Specifically, when we're talking about performance, I'd like to highlight a stud the visual transformer study done late last year. I'd like to call your attention in particular to two columns, the time in hours per epoch and the cost per epoch. We saw comparing JAX versus PyTorch that JAX was faster to run and cheaper to run. So when we were developing a model like Gemma, where we're training on up to six trillion tokens of text, being really efficient and fast with training time is incredibly important, and this was a huge priority for our team in Gemma's development. Another benefit that we looked to in JAX is its portability. As we know, one of the goals of having open models is that we want anyone to be able to use Gemma across any different configuration of hardware, which means we need our models to be really easy to port across different tech stacks. And this is where JAX comes in especially handy. Um, this study was done last year, I believe, externally by Cohere collaborating with MIT. And in particular, they analyzed TensorFlow, PyTorch, and JAX, 
and Jax had overwhelmingly the highest success rate porting between GPUs and TPUs. Last, and possibly my favorite advantage of Jax, is that it's just really easy to use. Training LLMs is hard. The code that we write is really complicated. So it's incredibly important when we're doing big collaborations that we're able to write code that's easy to read and easy to write. Um, one of the things I love about this user quote is that I think it encapsulates just how satisfying it is to write code in Jax. It's clean, it's easier to read, it's easier to write. This quote really highlights, I think, the user experience when it comes to Jax's performance. As I mentioned earlier, it takes a long time to train LLMs, and Jax just makes everything faster. So these are a couple of the reasons that we chose to use Jax when developing Gemma. I will now move on to a very small demo for you. I am sorry to say that it does not include anything about pirates, and I don't have a pirate voice to demonstrate for you. Um, but if we can move on to the demo, that would be great. Perfect. All right. So unfortunately, we are a little short on time today, so I won't be able to run all of these, these cells. But in particular, the thing that I want to highlight for you today is just how easy it is to get started using Gemma with Jax. Um, I'm going to show you very little code because it takes very little code to get started with, with Gemma and Jax. In particular, setting up Gemma is very easy, as, as Martin has already demonstrated for us. All that's required is importing Kaggle, importing the Gemma library from Kaggle, and specifying the Gemma variant that you want to use. Again, we will be using the, the 2B instruction tuned variant in this sample. Once you've loaded the, the Gemma model, there are only four steps required to start sampling from Gemma models, and they are all one to two lines of code. First, we download the checkpoints. We initialize a tokenizer, just two lines. We set up our transformer, and we start sampling. That's it. There are only three components required, the tokenizer, the transformer, and the sampler. From there, you can get started interacting with Gemma asking it the, the important questions. <laughs> and as you can see here, we can get prompts going fairly easily. <laughs> <laughs>